Welcome to FluteChats.com, a flute podcast with host Viviana Guzman. Hello, I'm Viviana Guzman. I'm here at the National Flute Association Convention, and my guest this afternoon is Emanuele Arista. Mucho gusto. Mucho. Welcome. Gracias. El placer es mío. I've known Emmanuel for many, many years. I always see you at the at these conventions, and you are a fabulous flute maker. Tell us a little bit how you started with uh, this whole journey with the flutes. Oh, it's a long version, but uh, I was in Peru and. Uh, working with the uh, cases for flutes. Uh -huh. My brother was working at Haynes at the time, uh -huh. and he says, "What? there must be a business that we can do with South America, with Peru, where I originally come from. And this was uh, in 1974, and uh, I was just, um, 20. And for two years I worked on the cases, we prepared some prototypes, and he was in Boston, and we sold some cases for Gamaynhardt, to the Gamaynhar company and also to the Artley company when they were doing the this uh, heritage model. They wanted to compete with the Boston flutes. And also for Powell from Mr. Dick Jerome used to buy the cases and I know about him and he knew about me when I was uh, a kid in, living in Peru. So that's, and then a couple of years later I came into Boston and we kept making the cases and just start off a flute or not, we decided to to make the flute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, go from cases to flutes, crazy. <laughs> you know, why not just put the classical Peruvian, you know, or uh -huh. Latino, I can do this. <laughs> and I uh, went to school at night, uh -huh. developed the Arista Piccolo with my brother in a partnership until that lasted, developed the Arista flute and eight years the relationship lasted. People, some people still think I'm working with my brother, mm. but it's fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, worked for a few years in aerospace uh, and telecommunications products, microwave components. And uh, uh, after that, I started making my own tools mm -hmm. and came out uh, with my own flute in 1991, mm -hmm. the manual flute. Mm. And it's, it's very good. It's very good. I, Great time, meet a lot of nice people, mm -hmm. <laughs> and great flutists all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I'm, um, you know, this is my 20th year doing this. Wow! Uh, tell me about the gold flute that I tried last year. I think you, oh, no, no, in New York, I think you, and I, I, I you said it was reserved for James Galway. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, actually, that that was. Uh, Sir James Flute, number 160. Ah, okay. Yes, okay, yeah. yes. And uh, I actually made a new one for him. That flute was a Bennett scale, uh -huh. and all of his flutes are Cooper scales. So very hard to do the switch. Yeah. Uh, so I made a Cooper scale fl flute for him, a reproduction of the last flute that Albert made. Uh -huh. And that Susan Milan, in those beautiful CDs that you hear her playing, this uh, French music, the French repertoire. I heard something totally different in the high register, and uh, in, I didn't have that in my flute before. Mm -hmm. It took more work to get that. Mm -hmm. So I asked permission to Albert and permission of Susan, and, and he allowed me to make a copy, a reproduction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just made a heavy wall and, uh, in gold and in silver, and uh, actually Albert saw my work, and he loved my work, and he was a great friend to have mm. and really sorry that he passed away yeah, yeah. but um, it he had old Alzheimer's mm. and the last three or four times that I met him it was the first time I was meeting him again mm. and one time I brought some pictures of us mm. and he said to me with his strong accent who's talking about strong accent <laughs> uh, and well I asked him for permission to, to to make the flute. Yeah. And I was a totally stranger yeah. at this time. Yeah. The first time I met him, long time ago, uh, when I, after I started my business in the 90s, he gave me uh, the, the riser uh -huh. for the head joint uh -huh. and make a huge improvement in my head uh -huh. joints. Uh -huh. 
And he didn't give me, I said, can I have another one just in case I made a mistake? And he said, sure, why not? And then our relationship grow in different places. But then when he got ill, every time I went to visit, it was the first time yeah. I had to show him pictures or something. And he was always like the first time I met him. Uh, and it was very strange, but he was such a nice guy and so generous. Sounds generous. To a perfect stranger. Yeah, yeah. So, and I asked some other people, and I told them, you know, my experience, and they told me, it's funny, the same thing with me. He even forgot, this is a nice story, actually, I went to see him in a nursing home uh, uh, one of the last two times I saw him, mm. and uh, a week later, Jimmy Galway was in London playing a concert, mm. and he showed him the flute that he made for Jimmy in Berlin. Mm. He didn't recognize Jimmy at all. After he went to the concert, he didn't know who he was, mm. but Jimmy's show him the flute yeah. and she says oh, this is the berlin flute this is jimmy this is jimmy galway's flute <laughs> <laughs> he recognized the flute uh -huh. every time i visit him i would bring a flute uh -huh. and it it was like his mind was just opened up mm. yes and it was like incredible experience uh, yeah. so i'm very grateful about this <laughs> uh, i i once met him i went to his house in um in London, you know, outside way I, the tube, <laughs> because I was picking up head joints for Julius Baker and then delivering them back in yeah. New York, long time ago, and yeah, I was very taken with his, uh, just he's very humble, incredibly humble for and, and for producing such an incredible, you know, uh, artistry, you know, yes. so and so responsible in the development of the modern scales yes. Yes. that it's people huge. don't even know about. Huge. Yes. Yes. So yes. wonderful, yeah, and yeah. that's the kind of people that 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 um, really I'm so happy that I went into this line of business because I get mm -hmm. to meet and experience them, and they know, you know, like you, you always welcome me with a beautiful smile. <laughs> 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 this is great. <laughs> Doesn't get better. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's good. I I love what I'm doing. Well, can you tell us a little bit if, if uh, a young flutist or a flute enthusiast who might be interested in becoming a flute maker, um, any kind of advice that you would pass on to them? The most important thing, the very practical steps will be to get familiarized with the basic machine tools yeah. like the lathe, the milling machine. So taking a course on tool making is good work in a, this kind of hard to, to find a place to work doing making tools, but mm -hmm. learn to make the tools, the idea of making the tools, because nobody is going to make the tools for you, and they're not going to well as, work as well if you don't know even what are you talking about. Mm -hmm. but, and then find a, a good prototype, a mentor, yeah. if possible. Huh. Uh, don't believe what everybody tells you. Mm -hmm. You got to have your very strong convictions and make your own mistakes, but find a good design, good head joint design, yeah. fall after that, good scale. Mm. The, the pads, very important, find a good pattern to do the pads for you. Mm. And, uh, and don't be afraid to introduce yourself to professionals mm. because mm. they will open up to you and give you this beautiful free advice. And, and steer you in a good direction most of the time. Mm -hmm. oh. Wonderful. That's really nice. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. <laughs> I'm here with Emmanuel Arista of Emmanuel Flutes. Yes. How do you say it in English? Emmanuel Flutes. Yes, it's Emmanuel. Emmanuel. In <laughs> Espanol, es Emmanuel. <laughs> My grandfather was Emmanuel. <laughs> Now, if uh, we wanted to get in touch with you or your flutes, your website? Very easy, emmanuelflutes.com. Okay. Yes, leave me a message. And if I can help with anything, please let me know. There are good flute makers all over the place. And there are shops that are 10, 20, 30 people. Mm -hmm. There are very few shops that are one person mm -hmm. that does the whole thing. Yeah. And that's very important to point out. Yeah. I make the whole thing. I, I'm, something must be wrong with me, but uh, it's the only way that I can control the quality. 
So I make the, uh, I shape the keys, I stamp the keys, I make the tools, make the head joints. And I used to make the cases, but now somebody else is so very hard. <laughs> somebody else is doing it. <laughs> I'm here with Emmanuel Arista of EmmanuelFlutes.com. And my name is Viviana Guzman, reporting from the National Flute Association Convention 2011. <laughs> right, thank you. <laughs>